Hi, my name is Jim Spazito, Senior Application Specialist, Research and Development, Pirates Corporation. Today, I will be giving a presentation on industrial bagel processing. The history of industrial bagel production. Automation of bagels in North America started in the last quarter of the 20th century. Daniel Thompson, a California math teacher turned inventor, started work on the first commercially viable bagel machine in 1958. Bagel baker Harry Lender, his son Murray Lender, and Florence Sender leased this, this technology and pioneered automated bagel production and distribution of frozen bagels in the 1960s. These bagels can still be found in your local supermarket within the frozen aisle. Murray Lender also invented and introduced pre-slicing the bagels to the market. Mr. Thompson developed a foreman tube and mandrel that were vertical in comparison to a horizontal mandrel and foreman tube that you see in today's production equipment. Mr. Thompson took advantage of your traditional dough ball line and was able to use the dough ball and have it extruded through a long cylinder pipe called the mandrel, which put the hole in the bagel. Where in today's mandrel, it's actually a little dough stick that actually gets pushed through a pressure plate and then through a forming tube that wraps itself around the mandrel and creates the bagel. A typical, typical commercial bagel formula consists of 100% flour and traditionally between 48 and to 50% water, depending on the uh, protein content of your flour. Compressed yeast range anywhere between half a percent on the retail end up to towards one and a half percent on the commercial end for a plain bagel. Salt is traditionally within that one and a half to two percent range. This formula has three quarters of a percent because we are utilizing Pirata's RTU sponge for its fermented flavor and enzyme activity. The RTU sponge at 4% brings back 1% salt in order to stabilize the enzymes within the RTU sponge itself. So between the salt we add at the mixer and the salt that's within the RTU sponge will be at 1.75%. Traditionally, sugar within a New York style bagel are between six to 8%. We are using Pirata's Moldorator W, which is a cultured wheat starch, at 2% for mold inhibition. We are also using Pirata's Extendo, which is an act inactivated yeast, at 0.25% to give us the dough rheology and relaxation that we need during makeup. We are also using Pirata's Moltec Mono 90 SH, which is a distilled mono, which gives you initial softness and lubricates the crumb for slicing. We have Pirato's Intense Fresh 230, which is an extended shelf life enzyme at 0.25%. And this, with the distilled monos, would give you anywhere between 14 to 21 days, depending on the region that you're producing in and the environment that your bagel is being stored in. We have a dough conditioner called Pirato's Double Bake Improver, which consists of your oxidation and strengthening enzymes at 1%. And then the RTU sponge, which we've already talked about. Flour, typical bake, uh, baking formulation ingredients. Number one would be your flour. Typical bread flour with a protein content of 12 to 14%. Most industrial bakeries will buy a flour within that 12% range and then fortify the protein as needed for the formulas that need extra fortification. You have whole wheat flour, gluten formin, formin abilities compromised by the brain and the germ. Then we have white whole wheat flour slash ultra grain flour, which is a brand name. White whole wheat flour sounds like an oxymoron, but it's a, ver a variety that contains the endosperm, the germ, and the bran, and the paler uh, variety of wheat called hard white wheat. It tastes slightly sweeter than the traditional whole wheat, which gives you normally a bitterness taste at high levels, thanks to its lower tannin content. Salt. Like I spoke within the uh, formula uh, prior, is between one and a half to two percent ranges. Vegetable oils not commonly used, but when it is used, it's usually less than three percent 
uh, within the formula. Usually, the bagels in the industrial end will contain distilled monos and uh, 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 extended shelf life enzymes. Yeast. There are many different types of yeast, but traditionally, your industrial bakery will use cream yeast. Cream yeast is an alternative to fresh yeast, which has some guidelines. Cream yeast contains about 18 to 20 percent yeast solids, the rest is water. So because of that, you'll have to have a, a conversion rate. So to switch from compressed yeast to cream yeast, we'll use a 1.9 conversion ratio. For every pound of compressed yeast, we would use 1.59 pounds of cream yeast and deduct 0.59 pounds of water from the dough to give you the same hydration. Below you'll find a chart of the different types of yeast, its yeast solids, the packaging comes in, the storage conditions, the shelf life of each product, and the usage rates. Typical, typical bagel formulation ingredients. Sweeteners. In green, I have highlighted the clean label version, granulated sugar, liquid sugar, brown sugar, honey, molasses, malt, dextrose, and stevia. Then we get into the non-clean, which is your high fructose, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, and sucralose. Non-diastatic malt is, is used alone or with another sweetener. It contributes more cross color and flavor than do other sweeteners. Besides containing maltose, sugar, non-diastatic malt also contains peptides, which enhance mallard browning. Mold inhibitors. Again, in the green, I've highlighted the, what we consider clean label mold inhibitors. The most commonly used on the industrial production would be calcium propionate or sorbic acid. As we get into the cleaner versions, we'll have citric acid, cultured wheat starch, corn syrup solids, and 200 grain vinegar. Dough conditioners. A dough condition, conditioning green is, are considered additives. They are often used for process parameters such as mixing tolerance, stability, water absorption, capacity, uh, gas and power, strengtheners, fermentation, and dough rheology. Typically, in a dough conditioner, your ingredients would co consist of the following oxidizing agents ascorbic acid, ADA, potassium iodate. Again, Highlighted in green are what we consider clean label or cleaner label. Enzymes, they would consist of xylanase, amylase, phospholipase, protease, and extended shelf enzymes. Your emulsifiers would be dough strengtheners and crumb softeners, datum, enthoxylated monodiglycerides, calcium self, uh, sterile uh, lactate, CSL, and SSL. Then we have your cleaner vegetable based monodiglycerides. Reducing agents are as follows. L-cysteine, which is most commonly used and the most cost-effective alternative. Then we get to the cleaner versions. You have inactive, inactivated yeast and protease for reducing agents and dough relaxers. Bread improvers, bread improver designs are constantly changing to meet the rapid advance, advances in food ingredient technology and demands of higher quality bakery products to go with the trends in the market. The call for the elimination of potassium bromate, ADA, and many, if not all, non-clean ingredients in recent years places a greater demand on effective alternatives. This was achieved by the development of complex enzyme systems for improvers and renewed emphasis on good bread manufacturing purposes. Today's demands were from cleaner to non-GMO to organic. The bagel production process. Process temperatures are the key to producing the perfect bagel. The temperature settings start from the mixing cycle and carry on through the entire process, which will be demonstrated through the rest of the process. Time and temperature control. Two types of bagel production processes. We have a straight dough bagel process, which you see a lot of industrial manufacturers uh, uh, currently doing. We have the mixing. Usually your mixing is 72, 78 to 82 degrees. You have your makeup, 
with your rot rotary knife divider and your forming tube. This is a no process, so the proof and temperatures, because it is a no process, your proof and temperatures are usually 80 to 85 degrees, and your humidity is somewhere in the range of about 75%, 70-75% uh, humidity. Once the bagels are, 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 are proofed, we go straight either into a steam tunnel oven or rack oven, or into a kettle, which we boils the bagel. The kettle temperature is normally 160 to 180 degrees. The reason the, the kettle temperature is this low is that because the bagel is, has been proofed and has, does not have any fermentation time or retarding time uh, that allows the bagel to chill and solidify, that gives it a lot of tolerance. Because the bagel is proofed and baked, you have very little tolerance, so be, uh, we need uh, colder water so the bakery doesn't disintegrate in the boiling water. Then we go from the kettle to the dryer, and then from the dryer into the oven. Ideally, if you're looking for the ideal dough temperature going from the dryer into the tunnel oven, it should be 90 to 110 degrees. If you're within these temperatures, you most almost assure yourself that you will, your bagels will not boil up or have any deformities whatsoever. Then we have the more traditional New York style bagel, which is a retarded bagel, which is, which is more or less mixed within the same parameters as, uh, as the straight dough bagel. Your dough temperatures are 78 to 82 degrees. Your makeup equipment is generally the same. Then we go from makeup to proofing, and you can proof, to, uh, 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 you, you proof about 60 minutes, whereas uh, a straight dough bagel is normally 90 minutes to 120 minutes. So we, we reduce the uh, proof time by, by 50% almost. So we proof at 100 to 105 degrees. Then we go from the proofer into a retarder, which is 37 to 42 degrees. These bagels can stay in a retarder anywhere between three and 24 hours. You see most industrial bakeries will be within that three to maybe five, six hours at the most. Then we come from a retarder into a warm up stage. Because your straight dough bagel comes out of a proof box, your internal dough temperature is already pretty much the same temperature as your proof box, 80, 85 degrees. So you, we don't need a, a, a warm up stage on a straight dough. Whereas coming out of a retarder, your dough is going to be the same temperature as your retarder. So it'll be between 37 and 42 degrees. If the bagels go from the, straight from the retarder into the kettle at this temperature, your internal temperature of your bagels is going to be too cold. And that's when we're going to start getting bagels that start blowing up and have a lot of deformities. So the warming stage is generally either bakery stage racks out, out on the floor uh, by the kettle and then spend about 10, 15 minutes or so. And then as, as they start going through the racks, uh, it'll be 10, 15 minutes or so. And it gets to about 65 to 68 degrees. That is ideal. Now the difference between the kettle here and the kettle on a straight dough, the kettle here is gonna be between 200, 200, 200, between 200 and 210 degrees. Most bagel kettles uh, on a high industrial line will run about 205 degrees. If you're at 205 degrees, you're ideal. Then from, uh, from the kettle, we go into uh, a, a typical same dryer as you would see on a uh, straight dough line with the same dough temperatures as far as 90 degrees to 110 degrees going in the tunnel oven. Then we go from the, from the oven to the cooling stage, which your bagels, in order before, uh, in, in order, uh, to get a temperature prior to packaging and, and, and minimize condensation and, 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 uh, and mold inhibition or uh, mold, uh, uh, mold um, your, your coolant stage has to be between 95 and 102 degrees. Here you'll see the coolant tower to the left and then the packaging uh, equipment to the right. You see the infeed and you see the slicing, the packaging to the crating and then into the warehouse. And then we get into the mixing part of it. Now we're going to get into, in, into the, uh, the production and the process part of it. How to calculate dough temperatures. Yeast doughs will turn out better if the temperature, uh, temperature is controlled to 80 degrees. Now, if you're, getting, if you're, using, if you're, using, uh, if you're producing uh, plain bagels, your dough temperatures will be anywhere between 78 to 82 degrees in that range. 80 is ideal. Um, if, you're start, if you're producing uh, cinnamon raisin bagels or anything that has a lot of fruit content, or uh, a lot of whole wheats, um, you're gonna you're gonna need your dough temperatures uh, a little bit warmer. Now you can be between 80 and 84 just to get that yeast working and expedite the uh, gas and power of the yeast. 
So the three variables for uh, calculating a, a dough temperature would be your room temperature, the flour temperature, and your friction factor on your mixer. Normally, your friction factor can be anywhere, anywhere between 30 to 40 degrees. Uh, so based on, say, that's 40, say 30 to 40 degrees, we'll pick a friction factor of 35 right in the middle. So the example here is, let's assume your room temperature is 72 degrees. Your flour temperature is 70 degrees, and your friction allowance is 35 degrees. Rule of thumb for the formula, you're looking for 80 degree dough, so you have your three variables, so it would be 80 times the three variables, which would be 240 degrees. Then I subtract the 35 degrees of friction factor, the 72 degrees for my room temperature, and the 70 degrees for flower temperature, which tells me in a perfect world, I could use a 30, 63 degree water and get my 80 degree uh, 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 dough temperature coming out of the mixer. Now we get into the, the mixing part of it. All ingredients are, uh, except for the particulates, are added at the bowl for direct mixing. The salt can be withheld until about 75% 75, 75 of the mixing cycle to help reduce mix times anywhere between one to three minutes. Uh, it can reduce your mix times. Dough temperatures, again, are 78 to uh, 82 degrees on a plain dough. Again, no particulates such as raisins, nuts, and so on are added at the end. Once you have full dough, uh, dough development, only to uh, incorporate uh, the, the, the particulates. Mixing. A low absorption bagel, uh, of, of a low absorption bagel dough is very, uh, very energy sensitive. It's important, properly size the mixer and a bat size, only due to the fact that the dough is so tight and you, you, you would put a lot of stress on the mixer itself. Spiral mixers are recommended for small to medium sized bakeries, whereas horizontal mixers are feasible for high production facilities through, through uh, throughput. The dough is mixed on low speed for about two minutes until it reaches uh, uh, on low speed until for two minutes just to incorporate the ingredients and then mix generally in, in, in the six to eight minutes on high speed until uh, uh, full development and uh, the dough is nice and ext extensible and you have to write dough rheology for your equipment. Makeup. It is carried out right after the, uh, the mixing cycle. There's no floor time because these bagel machines actually uh, scale off a of density. So the more yeast activity you have, the more air you have within that product, the more your, your, your weights will be off. So the, 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 the fresher, the denser the product, the better weight uh, control you're going to have. Usually the operator will check uh, periodically the weights on, uh, on a uh, uh, on a digital scale, they should be between traditionally uh, on an industrial bagel between four and a quarter to four and a half ounces, which would be 0.27 to 0.3 on a digital scale. Raw bagels are placed on plastic boards that have been lightly coated with cornmeal, spacing them so they're not touching or directly uh, and, and placed directly onto, onto shelving or an automated proofing system. Boards are placed onto either a, a bagel rack or into a proofer where if, it, if an automated proofer is, uh, is existent. Proofing is part of the fermentation process. It's very important that the bagels are proofed the correct amount of time. Improper proofing can cause a variety of issues and distortions. Now, the, the key to uh, a fully proof bagel is pretty archaic, but it works, and it's really the only way to uh, uh, tell if a bagel is fully proof. You take a ba on, a, uh, on a straight dough, you're about 80, uh, 90 to 120 minutes. You would take a bagel uh, from the proof box, put it in a container with water. If the bagel stands on top of the water, it is fully proofed. Same as with a, with a, a, a retarded bagel. If the bagel, uh, if the bagel semi floats, but it's underwater, you need about another 10, 15 minutes. If the bagel sinks, then you're probably about another 15 to 30 minutes. But the bagel has to sit on top of the water to be a fully proof bagel. Then we have a dough chunker. This is where the, the, the dough itself is chunked into dividers. Now we're gonna go through a, a dough ball line. Uh, there's two different types of lines. It's either a dough ball line or a rotary knife cut line. Here we have the mixer and the, uh, the makeup line itself. They'll be the same regardless of uh, whether it's a dough ball or a stick line itself. We go. 
from the mixer into a dough trough, and then which you see on the left and on the right, you see the dough, the, the dough trough ho hoist, that, which gets dumped into the, the dough chunker. The dough chunker chunks pieces of doughs into a divider, and then from the divider to the right, it goes into an overhead uh, proof, uh, proofing system. That overhead proofing system allows the bagel to relax, so it's able to go through uh, uh, the, the bagel form itself, pressure plate, and, and so on, and get the extensibility you have, so you don't get any spring or spring back or or, 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 uh, or shrinkage. This is what a dough ball line would look like as it comes out of the divider. The dough dough balls are, are, are rolled very tight, so you have a lot of tension, and that's when we go into uh, the intermediate proofer just to let that dough relax a little bit. These inter inter intermediate proofers can run any anywhere between five to about 12 minutes. Uh, the, the, the sooner you get out of, the, out of the, uh, the, the, the intermediate proofer, the, le the more extensibility you have. The longer it sits in that intermediate proofer, the more yeast activity you have, the buckier your dough gets, the more you're gonna have uh, 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 disformations within your bagel. Now we're gonna walk, walk through uh, a stick bagel line which is more uh, common and more traditional uh, within uh, industrial uh, bagel processing. Now we go from, uh, uh, to, to gonna go from right to left. The right would be your chunker on top and then your divider on the bottom. It cuts out little, little square pieces of doughs. Uh, we call them bagel sticks. And this is what they look like uh, as far as divided dough. Now here you're going to go from the left to the right. It come, as it's coming out of the divider, it's being, it's being uh, uh, carried into what we're going to call a pressure plate and a forming tube with the mandrel, which we'll see here. You see uh, to the left, you see uh, the, the divider, that, 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 that's your, your, where your dough gets scaled. Then you see the pressure plate where the, uh, the bagel uh, stick gets flattened a little bit and stretched out a little bit. And it goes through the, uh, un pass it under the mandrel, which allows that bagel to, to wrap itself around, around the mandrel through the forming tube, which uh, gives you uh, a round bagel. Here you see it going through the mandrel in a forming tube. Now the reason I show uh, the forming tubes here, each forming tube in each mandrel will make a certain size bagel. So if you're looking for uh, a mini bagel, you would have to change out the forming tube, the belt, and, uh, and the mandrel itself. Uh, that whole, all those uh, forming tubes across the line would be all uh, exchanged for smaller ones. If you're looking for, for, for bigger bagels, then you would, you would use a bigger bagel. Normally, each forming tube will, will, will have a, a, a weight tolerance of about an ounce to two ounces uh, of tolerance uh, that you can go up or down um, before you start having complications. And this is what a formed bagel looks like coming out of a forming tube and the mandrel itself. Here we come from the forming tube uh, itself down to the belts, down to a re reciprocated belt which deposits the bagels onto cornmeal boards. Here uh, is an auto automated proofing system. So it goes, it comes from, uh, from the line itself onto the boards and then into an automated proofer, which it would be 60 minutes here because uh, the system is a, a retarded bagel. And then uh, proofing. Proofing conditions uh, depend on whether the product's retarded or straight dough, as we spoke about earlier. For a tartar bagel, it ha has a well-balanced formula. It'll proof, with, proof within the 60-minute range at 100 degrees, 100 and 105 degrees, and 80, 85% humidity. For straight dough should proof within the 90-minute range at 80 degrees, 80, 85 degrees, 70, 75% humidity. For left, you see a manual uh, 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 proofer where the boards are put onto a, a rack itself, and then the rack itself is wheeled into, uh, into a manual proofer where on the right-hand side, you'll see an automated proofing system where uh, uh, it's not touched uh, uh, by human whatsoever. And here um, we see uh, uh, on the bottom, we'll see uh, an automated racking system for an automated proofing. And then on the right, you see a hand-rolled racking system uh, where it's actually carted in and, and uh, uh, put into lanes uh, uh, manually. Now, typically, your ideal temperatures for uh, a retarded bagel should be 35 to 42. I'd like it 37 to 42 just to give me a little bit of a uh, yeast fermentation and yeast movement. Um, just give me a little more flavor, a little, little bit of uh, better color. Retarded bagels coming from, uh, from the retarder will have an internal dough temperature 
the same temperature as your, your retarder is after about three hours. So that temperature will need to be brought up to about 65, 68 degrees, which, which would be needed to either floor time or it would pass to a conveyor system um, uh, to uh, allow the temperature to, uh, to come up to 65 to, eight, 65 to eight, 68 degrees. And then it's loaded to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, the oven loader and then into the kettle and into the oven. Here, uh, you see the warming stage as the uh, the rack comes out of out of the um, retarder, and on the right you see the the distance it has to travel. Uh, it comes from left to right. The distance it has to travel uh, from uh, from the retarder into in, into the kettle that that is uh, su uh, su substantial enough to give it the dough temperature that it needs. Boiling. Now in a kettle in a uh, retarded bagel, the kettle will be 200 to 210 degrees. In that range, 205 is ideal. Once you start producing bagels at a high rate, you're never going to get that bagel, uh, uh, that kettle, to come to a, a roll and boil. Only because of the, the difference in temperatures of the bagel, uh, uh, it, it just lowers that temperature. But if you're within that 205 degree range, you're perfect to get the the, the, the gelatinization of the starch that you need. It gives you the uh, the the texture, the color, and everything else that you want in in, in the bagel itself. Um, a bagel that is perfectly proofed generally would need a kettle of 40, 45 to 60 seconds if it's perfectly proofed. If the bagel, if the bagel's overproofed and, and, it, and it tends to be softer because it's overproofed, then you're going to reduce that kettle time by about 15 seconds. You want to get it out of the water faster so it doesn't disintegrate within, uh, uh, within uh, the kettle itself. If a bagel is underproofed, then you would increase the, 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 the uh, kettle time from that 45 to 60 to 60 to 75 seconds because you need to get that bagel internal uh, temperature uh, up to up to the temperature you need and you need to get that yeast activity going so you don't have uh, 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 excess of yeast going into your in, into your oven which causes a lot of boiling up. Here we're looking at uh, uh, the uh, bagel kettle entrance to the left and then you see coming out of the uh, out of the right, out of the, out of the kettle, you see the shine and the wetness and the gelatinization that the starch has. Uh, that's what gives you that texture. Then at the bottom, you see what your ba uh, typical bagel kettle and boiler looks like. Now, the drying stage coming after after the kettle, uh, it's one it's one one of two ways. It's either air dried with air knife, or it's uh, uh, dried uh, with uh, infrared burners. Picture on the left to the, to the bottom. You'll see infrared burners that dry that that dries uh, the bagel out. Now, if you don't use either one or one or the other, you're going to have to use a lubricant, uh, uh, Dura Lube or uh, 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 Luber Plate. There's a bunch of different names for it, but it's basically uh, uh, a greasing system um, that actually every two, three seconds, whatever it is, it actually applies uh, a lubricant onto the oven belt, and that lubricates uh, uh, the belt so the bagels don't stick to the belt during the baking cycle. And uh, the bacon to the bagels. Um, after bagels have passed through the kettle, they, they sh the oven should be anywhere between 400 to 550 degrees. And, and it's tough to give uh, uh, definitive uh, uh, temperatures on, on bagel ovens because there are so many different ovens as far as direct, indirect, uh, infrared burners, uh, airflow. There's just so much that, 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 that determines that temperature. But, if you, but depending on the oven, you should be within that 400 to 550 degrees. Now, a typical industrial bagel will take six to nine minutes. I look more for that seven to eight minutes uh, to just ensure that I'm, I'm having an, uh, uh, keeping enough moisture, natural moisture within that bagel to give me the extended shelf that I'm looking for. And your internal temperature coming out of your oven should be within the that 195 to 205 on the high end. If you're closer to 200 uh, for industrial bagel, um, the better you're going to be as far as uh, uh, natural moisture retention. On the bottom here, you see bagels coming out of um, out of the oven onto uh, 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 onto a deposit belt, and then to the right, all the way to the right, you see uh, traveling into uh, uh, onto another belt, which is going to bring it onto uh, uh, the cooling conveyors. Here's a typical picture of of, of, of a bagel tunnel oven. Like I said, there's just a, uh, the airflow and then the heat exchange is so different on on. Uh, the different types of ovens, it's, it's hard to narrow it down 
uh, until we actually win and, uh, and and figure out which oven that the, uh, the customer is using, and then then we determine the we determine the parameters for those ovens. Here uh, you're looking at the cooling stage, 95 to 102 degrees is is ideal. Uh, closer to that 95 to 100 range, uh, the better you are, the less you're going to dry that bagel out. Um, to the left, you see a uh, uh, cylinder uh, 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 cooling conveyor, and to the right, you see uh, uh, a tracking cooling conveying system where it actually utilizes uh, uh, the ceiling and, and just wasted space uh, above most of the equipment uh, uh, within uh, within the bakery itself. And we go into slicing and packaging. Um, here you see the uh, to the left on the bottom, you see cooling conveyor in feed. You go into the slicing lanes uh, up on top. Uh, to the slicers, the packaging lanes, the wrapping, the quick lock drop, the crated into shipping. This is it for the presentation. Hopefully it was enjoyable and 